Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter for episode number 258 for Tuesday, April 23rd, 24. And uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. I am not well. And it's ironic that the title for this episode is Getting Back to Normal because I'm anything, anything but normal. Okay, right now. Uh, if you saw my vlog yesterday, you know that I developed on Sunday a cough and other symptoms and of either of a bad cold bad flu or the dreaded covid i did just get off a plane from australia where i was stuck with a bunch of strangers full plane for 15 hours and then another five hours to toronto so you know airplanes are traveling disease carriers so anyways yesterday i put in a rough day yesterday so we had some COVID tests here and Walter gave me a COVID test and boy, yeah, did I ever show up with COVID? Yep. It, there was no doubt that I had COVID. So we had to see if there, I could get some of the antiviral medication for this because I'm over 65 here in Ontario. I can, I qualify for it. Um, so we had to find it. Walter is amazing. Okay. He went right to work. Our local pharmacy that we have our accounts with. Yeah, they didn't have any. They were out. So they suggested really helpful that you call around to other pharmacies and see what you can find. Okay. So that's what Walter did. I think he called about 10. He finally, the, the finally found it, but it was at the hospital at the hospitals um pharmacy and uh, he called them up well the pharmacist there did not want to she did not want to give it to us unless we had from our own pharmacy a prescription written for it okay so walter got back on the blower to the um our pharmacy and uh the pharmacist there said yeah it would take a little bit of time like an hour or so he had this huge form he had to fill out so he went to it and about i don't know sometime later called us back said it was ready but he needed to speak to me because there were some questions that had to be asked so yep um meantime i'm sitting in my uh, lazy boy chair i'm bundled up in two quilts trying to sleep that's what i did most of yesterday i tried to sleep i just can't sleep um and i want to sleep because i'm very tired so anyways uh, i answered his questions and everything and he says sure you can come down and pick up the prescription and away you go. This is now at about 5.30 in the afternoon. The pharmacy at the hospital closes at 7. Now the hospital's not that far from us. So Walter ripped down to the um, pharmacist here, got the prescription, ripped over to the hospital, and got home about quarter to 7 and with my prescription. Now also I was told about all the side effects this has and what not to do and everything like that i was told to get off my crestor medication which is for my cholesterol um not to take that until uh two days after the end of the doses of this antiviral drug and there are five doses but it's you have to take three pills in the morning three pills in the evening um for five days until it's gone and then i don't know am i going to be cured We'll see, I hope. Um, so, um, yeah, I, 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 once again, I say Walter is amazing. If this had been left to my own devices and I had called and they told me didn't have any, I would have just accepted it at the fact of that and say, okay, well then I'm going to die. Um, but Walter didn't. Walter was persistent and he got it for me. So that's what I'm on right now. Slept in a little bit today, tried to sleep in. Um, I think I was sleeping during the night um, at some points, but I woke up frequently. And uh, so I woke up tired, put it that way, very tired. I'm still very tired. In fact, I'm so tired, I debated whether I was even gonna do this today, but I had it all planned out, all ready to go. And I thought, you know, push yourself a little bit because you got to, you got to. I hate laying around doing nothing and feeling miserable. This takes my mind off feeling miserable. 
so anyways yeah after six booster shots the whole bit all the precautions and everything i still ended up with COVID. now mind you if i hadn't had those six booster shots i'm sure this would be a lot more a lot more serious than it is now um but anyways those of you that have co have had COVID, you know what i'm talking about um and hopefully maybe by the end of this week by the weekend i'll be feeling maybe a little better um i do notice that my cough that i have and that's the worst part this cough has been reduced um my throat's very sore mainly because of the coughing i've got my water here i have to keep lubricating up excuse me so and the worst part of all this too is i'm the kind of person that doesn't do sick well um yeah i know men we're babies right i guess we are i'm not going to argue the point i just don't have the energy um but for me personally um i just don't want to be sick who does but i mean i just don't want to give into it at all and i've had a few suggestions about getting lots of rest and drink chicken soup and you want to soften the chicken soup idea doesn't sound bad because i really haven't in the last two days had much to eat because i just haven't had an appetite now i could stand to lose a few pounds this may not be the best way to do it but you know so anyways that's what's happening excuse me today if my head's a little cloudy in what i'm going to do here and uh, hopefully maybe getting back to normal will be next week we'll see okay so when i was away in australia i always make lists of things i want to do when i get home and most of the time i have a huge long list and when i look at it when i get home i go mm, no nope, don't want to do that and i scratch a lot of them off but there are a couple of things that i do want to do i don't have anything to show you because of course i was away behind me over this this way ah. this way the one up there you've seen it before that one's still hanging on up there it's all done the top it's the pride flag it's got to go on lucy but that's some of my projects because counting that one i think i have three quilts that need to be quilted on lucy that was my plan when i got home from australia to work on those this week but that plan has changed because of COVID. so they're going to just have to sit there and rot for a while i saw that while i was away that stephanie did a video about making a rope bowl and um it kind of got me interested in the idea so i ordered some clothesline rope from amazon it came the other day and that's a project i don't know when i'll get to it but i would like to give that a try just for the technique i mean i'll be honest they don't thrill me you know uh i don't need a whole bunch of rope bowls and that kind of thing but the technique is interesting so i'd like to try it for the technique um i was talking about doing a third pattern based on an Australian tile that I saw on a bathroom floor in one of the hotels we stayed in. Well, I did work on that a little bit and it turned out that would have Y seams in it. And yeah, so I tried to redevelop it so it wouldn't have Y seams and I just got nowhere with it. Um, not because I couldn't make it work, it's because I don't think I was as interested in it uh, when I saw it in fabric format somebody suggested to me that you know maybe uh pair up with shannon and sh we could do like a foundation paper piecing pattern for it and i'm quite sure it could be done that way yes um but i don't know if it's worth it because now that i take a closer look at this particular block i think it's kind of boring i thought at the time when i saw it might have been the wine uh whatever that it would make a really unique looking quilt but i'm not so sure anymore so I think I'm going to put that on the back burner and um, I need to concentrate on, I have all this Australian fabric, which I'm about to show to you. And uh, I'm looking and I've got a sort of a design from another book that I think I would like to do in the Australian fabric, but I need to play around with it first to see if it's going to work or not. Um, but anyways, those are future plans probably not going to get to any of them this week okay so what's happening well tomorrow is sewing with stephanie and stephen <laughs> yeah um i'll be there um i don't know how long i'll be there but i will be there um 
I miss you all. I want to see you all. And of course, you can't catch what I've got through a screen. So that's a good thing. Uh, but anyways, we will see what will happen. But definitely it's on. The link for it's in the show notes. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've gone back to the original link. So don't use the one that Stephanie was using because that will get you nowhere. You've got to use the link that I set up a long time ago. It's the same one. And if you don't have a copy of that link, it's in the show notes. You can use that. Okay. And as far as an update on the Idiot Quilter Spring Retreat, um, it's just about full. Yep. I think I have five, maybe six spots actually left. So if you want to be part of it, please go ahead. Let me know. Let me know quickly. Um, I will be establishing a waiting list. So don't despair if you, if you send me a thing and I send it back and say, I'm sorry, it's full. However, I'll put you on the waiting list if you wish, because people always drop out a few days before. And I'll just pull from the waiting list and give people on the waiting list an opportunity to be part of it. And that's on May the 4th. But as I said, register now. Okay. Um, oh, how do you register? In case you're new here, all you need to do is send me an email. My email address is in the about section of uh, the channel. And uh, just with your name, first and last, please, real names and uh, the email address you wish to be contacted at, and I'll send you back a confirmation. Okay, that takes me to the fabrics I bought in Australia. So I did show these on the live the other day when I wasn't quite so dead. Uh, I have to figure out the button to push. There it is. Okay, pretty, very, very pretty. Um, I got quite a few actually. A few more than I thought. Uh, quilt stores in Australia are far and few between. Uh, but I bought these at a couple of different stores I went to. And I can't wait to use them. The piece on the end, the white and black piece, actually came from Philippa. And I'm going to talk more about Philippa in a minute. Because she gave us, she bundled up uh, something that she made for us. And she also had three meters of uh, really nice um, Australian fabric and uh, we showed that on the live because Walter has it right now because he's going to make sure out of it of course and I have a feeling that's what Philippa thought too when she gave us three meters of it and uh, yeah so anyways they're very pretty I think they're going to make a gorgeous quilt once I get the design uh, decided upon so this is the table runner I probably shouldn't have put it on a gray background but this is the table runner that uh, Philippa gave me, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's paper pieced. You'll notice that she has used Aboriginal fabrics in it as well. Um, she did some stitch in the ditch uh, for the quilting, and I believe in uh, these little circles you see, and I think in some of the bigger ones, she did uh, a very light circular pattern as well. It's gorgeous. And right now, it's sitting upstairs in my formal living room on the coffee table there. That's a place of honor. And I love it. It's beautiful. And of course, she picked my colors, blues as well. Absolutely gorgeous work here. Thank you, Philippa, so much for that. I love it. Absolutely love it. And of course, you did meet my little friends on Stephen and Walter Live. My stuffies. And... Uh, the koala and the kangaroo I bought in a kid's toy store, I think, uh, in, I'm not sure where that was. That was in the Gold Coast, I believe. And then when we were in the airport waiting for a flight to come home, in one of the gift stores in there, I saw this, can koala and can kangaroo. Now, if you saw um, live, you know that we'd already opened those cans up, but they're, they are what they say they are, but they're not kangaroo or koala meat. They're stuffies uh, in there as well. And they're the cutest things. Uh, let me grab one and show you what they, how I have them on display. Uh, let's see, switch over. Okay, here he is. Can koala. So I thought that was really cute. And I love the can and the whole idea of it. 
So that's how they're sitting on my Australian section of my sewing room display. Uh, this and the kangaroo. And yeah, I couldn't resist. And they weren't expensive. You got two of them for 25 bucks. 25 Aussie dollars. So slightly less than Canadian. So yeah, but I couldn't resist. Okay, so that takes me to subscribers quilts of the week. Now, when we got home, uh, and we cleaned out our mailbox, which was crammed full. There was a package in there. And it was a package that came from one of our subscribers, Kathy Weidman. I hope I said her name correctly. W-I-E-D-M-A-N-N. -N, Weidman. She made me a mini quilt using my first quilt pattern. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you that. But I'm also going to show you... Uh, Diane Roberts beautiful creation that she submitted some time ago uh, so you're going to see both of them right now with my explanation of them this week I have two quilts to show you from subscribers and the first one that you see on your screen is from Diane Platt Roberts and she writes I just hate to throw fabric away so I use as much as I can the rest goes into dog cat beds this started out with lightweight stabilizer. Then I took strips to weave horizontal and vertical. It will soon find a home in Africa. And that is a really nice quilt. A simple one, but I love how you've used scraps and you've woven them back and forth, or at least given it a woven look. Now, I don't think you've uh, got this quiltage yet, so I imagine that's to come uh in the future but this is wonderful and i love the sashing on it the little white thin strips of fabric really set off each black block and it's really really colorful so thank you for sharing that with us diane and the second quilt is a special one that was gifted to me by kathy weidman hope i said your name right kathy but this is my quilt design made as a mini quilt and i really love it it is so colorful and of course i see that she has used uh some fabric from her stash that has writing on it which i think offsets the stars in the center with the outside uh border and binding um this is really, really nice. And this is going to go in a special place in my sewing room. So thank you for that as well, Kathy. Now, while we were in Australia, someone sent me a link. I can't remember who it was. I never remember people's names. I'm sorry. I'm bad. I should really note these things down, but I don't. Um, someone sent me uh, an Instagram link where this woman makes prints 3D fabric. And it's kind of fascinating. I'm not really sure what you would do with it. Maybe if you're doing cosplay, making costumes and that. But the technique looked really interesting. I might give it a try just to see how this works. But I made a little uh, video about this, so I'll insert it here. This is an unusual project that I want to attempt. What I will do with it when I'm done, I am not sure. But this is 3D printed fabric. It's not really fabric. It is 3D pieces printed onto a piece of netting or organza, something like that, um, that you can use to create something like maybe a costume or something like this. In this case, this example I'm showing you that I called up from the web is basically looks like armor or scales. So I've got some ideas in my head for how I would like to to go about this and I'm not even sure whether I will get around to it or whether I will uh, make it into something because I'm still up in the air about what I could make it with but why this intrigued me was because it is combining two of my loves 3d printing and quilting uh, or sewing and well hang on for the future and see what I come up with with this idea now, one of my future projects is going to come from a book that I talked about some time ago that I bought called Table Tastic 2 by Doug Lico. It is, there are three books in the series. I bought the, the second book um, because Stephanie had the second book. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, and um, I went looking through it and I saw this one. It's called the Churchill Table Runner. 
but the block is really interesting, really nice. And I'm thinking of taking this block and possibly making it into a quilt using my Australian fabrics. So here's what I'm talking about. Recently, I purchased a book called Table Tastic 2 by Doug Lico, and this is one of the patterns that's in the book for a table runner. It's called the Churchill. I love the block. Will I make it into a table runner? Maybe, but I would also like to take this block and change it into a quilt. And I can see this being a quilt made up of scraps or even just doing certain color combinations where each block or every so many of the blocks are a different color. I think it looks fantastic. And this is a fantastic book. And there's a set of three you can buy, all called Table Tastic, Table Tastic 1, Table Tastic 2, and Table Tastic 3. And they're all available on Amazon if you wish to purchase them. I have never done a Doug Lico design before or pattern, although I have a couple in my collection that I never got around to. So this is definitely on my very close in the future projects to do. Now, usually at this point in the program, I have uh, an interview uh, insert. I'll usually insert a teaser for an interview I've done. I haven't done any interviews in a while. And uh, right now, they're kind of on a hold. Unless I come across somebody that I really want to interview, I'm not actively seeking them out. Um, just, they take a lot of work to do, quite frankly. Uh, more into the, you know, coordination of time and everything with the other person. And right now, I just, not going to bother. So sorry about that. But I'm still open to suggestions. Okay. Uh, that takes me to online quilt stores and this one's called So Productive and it's in a little town that's about an hour and a half, two hours to the east of me called Acton, Acton, Ontario. And I didn't know about this one. I stumbled upon it by accident. And so here's my review of So Productive. This week's online quilt store is in Acton, Ontario and it's called So Productive. And I've just stumbled across this one. I didn't know this one existed. So this is my first look at what they have on their web page. So here is the opening page of their website. And you can see they list some of their fabrics. Now, I'm not sure. These are really good prices. These cannot be for a meter. I imagine they are um, half meter, but we'll check that out in a second. And I'm just looking to see what else is here. They have blenders. Looks like they sell AccuQuilt supplies as well. Um, their prints. Not sure if I really like their interface here. Too much information on the very front page. Wide fabric, pre-cuts, seasonal, garment. You're scrolling forever on this. And that I find is a bit of a, a bore. So let's pop right up to the top and let's go to fabric, solid print, panel, seasonal, fleece, wide fabric, pre-cuts, garment fabrics, pattern kits. Okay, well, let's pick prints and that just pops us down to the bottom of the page. So it looks like everything is done as one whole huge page. So what do we've got here? Valentine hearts. That's kind of pretty. Haven't seen that before. Uh, there's some Harry Potter. Um, Camelot fabrics. It seems to be all over the place. Let's pick one. Three wishes. I like three wishes. They say it's 1986. Is that a meter? Uh, it's cut in yards, not meters. I have a thing. You know that with Canadian stores, it should be in meters. That's what we're in. But nevertheless, 1986. Um, middle of the road as far as prices are concerned right now. Um, select. Okay, full. So, okay, that's 1986. So I guess you're going to have to watch it on this pull-down menu as to um, what the prices are. And I have not really seen this before. Let's see, a quarter of a yard is 497 half a yard, 993 Okay, um, that's kind of a different way of doing it rather than putting in what you want. Well, I suppose that works not too badly, I guess. I just have never really seen that before on a website that I can think of. Okay, so what do they charge for solids? Let's take a look at that. 5 90 14 12 Okay. King Cotton Black Quilters. 
size cut in yards, full yard. Wow, that's cheap for full yard of just basic black at five ninety. So um, yeah, so I guess each of these prices that you are seeing here are the price for a yard. Just out of curiosity, let's check this one that's neutral, fourteen dollars. Full yard, yeah, fourteen dollars. Okay, takes a little time to get used to that setup, but that works okay. All right, so fabric. Let's take a look at their wide back fabric. Um, thirty-five forty-six, thirty-five ninety, thirty-five. So that's the upper end of the scale for wide fabrics, and they only look like they only have three to choose from. Pre-cuts, okay, they have a few. Prices are about what you'd expect. Not a lot of selection there. Seasonal. Halloween. Seems to be lots of Halloween, lots of Christmas. You can load some more. Yeah, they have some to choose from. Uh, and various prices. Everywhere from $8.50 a yard to $19.48 a yard. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the top of the page. I don't like this scrolling effect. Um, uh, they do have garment fabric. We'll leave that. They have fleece. Let's take a look at patterns and kits. And they have a few patterns. They've got some quilt smart kits. Um, yeah, that can't be, that must be just, a, that's a pattern. Yeah, not a great selection there either. Somewhat limited. Okay, let's go back up to the top of the page again. See what I mean about the scrolling through this? It's very annoying. Let's see what they're selling for thread. Mettler and Americana. Okay. Two that are not as readily available on other websites. Mettler is 540 for a 200 meter spool. 940 for an 800 meter spool. Okay, so prices vary. If you're into Mettler, this might be a place to go. Uh, not a lot of places carry Mettler, I have found, either in-store or on uh, a website. Okay, notions. Cutting tools, cutting mats, rulers, pressing, pins and needles, seam rippers. Um, well, let's take a look at rulers. Probably pretty much the standard. Yeah, they've got three to choose from. Prices are what you'd expect. Pressing, yeah, they don't have a lot. They do have needles, and they see how organ needles it looks like, seam rippers, yeah. Not a lot there on the Notions side. Crafting, stabilizers, they do have stabilizers. And it's Pellon, okay. It looks like you buy it by the yard. Um, doesn't look like they have batting, though. Decorative fabric and ribbon. I didn't see anything here about batting. Classes and clubs, have a long arm, block of the month, enhanced table runner, yeah, a few here, serger savvy, not a lot, and I'm assuming that these are in class, and yeah, so these look like they're all in-store classes. And they do sell Husqvarna sewing machines as well. Again, something you'd probably want to go to the actual store for. Okay, so let's go back to their home page if I can find it. Well, I don't know if I can find it. It doesn't seem to work if I click up here. Let's go back into fabric. Okay, there's their home page again. So overall, um, there might be a few things here you'd want. Prices are about what you'd expect right now. Uh, it is sold by the yard, though, not the meter. So that's 36 inches as opposed to 39 inches. And shipping. I did not look into shipping. Let's just see what we have for that. Um, shipping. They ship to both Canada and the United States by Canada Post. Uh, most orders the same day. It doesn't really say what their shipping costs are. I guess you'll find that out when you put in an order. Okay, so that is so productive. Uh, you might want to give it a try. Okay, so as we come to the end of this, yeah, fog brain, COVID brain, the end of this 
episode. That's the word I'm looking for. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, this ep end of this episode. Um, just a reminder, there are still spots for the retreat open. Send me an email. I'll put you in. And uh, so chatty this week on Friday. I don't think there's going to be one for a couple of reasons. One is the obvious. I'm sick. Um, the other reason is I have no idea what to talk about. Walter and I have not sat down and really figured this out yet. So probably, I say probably because you never know things can change. There'll probably not be a so chatty this week. Hopefully there will be a Stephen and Walter live though. Okay. <laughs> live. That's almost ironic too in some ways. Okay. Enough of me bitching and moaning here and having a runny nose and coughing all over you. Well, all over my screen. I hope you're feeling good. And... I hope I'm feeling much better by the next time you see me. So have a good week. Talk to you later. Bye for now.